the capital asset pricing model, or CAPM. The capital asset pricing model explains the relationship between expected return and market risk. It is one of the most significant innovations in portfolio history. The model is simple yet powerful, intuitive yet profound, and uses only one factor. And yet, it is broadly applicable. CAPM is based on the idea that only market risk should affect asset prices. No other factors are considered. Systematic risk is a risk that cannot be avoided and is inherent in the overall market. It is non-diversifiable because it includes risk factors that are innate within the market and affect the market as a whole, i.e. interest rates, economic growth, etc. Examples of non-systematic risk could include the failure of a drug trial, major oil discoveries, or an airliner crash. Investors are capable of avoiding non-systematic risk through diversification by forming a portfolio of assets that are not highly correlated with another. CAPM asserts that the expected return of assets vary only by their systematic risk as measured by beta. The formula for CAPM states that the expected return, which can also be called the required return, is equal to the risk-free rate plus the beta times the market risk premium or expected risk premium, which is the difference between the expected market rate and the risk-free rate. CAPM asserts that the expected returns of assets vary only by their systematic risk as measured by beta. Two assets with the same beta will have the same expected return irrespective of the nature of those assets. Given an asset's systematic risk, the expected return can be calculated using CAPM. The risk-free rate is 3%, while the stock for ABC Company has a beta of 1.5, and the market risk premium is 6%. What is the expected return for ABC stock? 3% plus 1.5 times 6%, or 12%. If beta is greater than one, you would generally expect the asset to have a higher respected return than the overall market. The risk-free rate in theory is the rate of return of an asset that produces a constant known rate of return in all future economic states. Practically speaking, the rate of return of an investment with guaranteed or nearly guaranteed cash flows. Sovereign debt is often used as a proxy. For example, U.S. Treasuries or German Treasuries. This is the rate that serves as a reference rate for valuing other investments. Let's consider 100 investors with one-year time horizons, each buying a one-year Treasury bill or any other default-free one-year bond with a 2% expected return. After year one, the return for all investors would always be 2%. It is important to note that the realized return is not certain if sold before one year. Also keep in mind, while government bonds may offer returns that are risk-free in nominal terms, they are not risk-free in real terms since expected inflation can be volatile. CAPM only considers one aggregate metric of market risk, and that is beta. It assumes investors own diversified portfolios, which means that they don't get rewarded for unsystematic risk as it should be diversified away. Remember, beta tells us about one type of risk, market risk. It's not a measure of an investment's total risk, and low beta or zero beta does not necessarily mean an investment has no volatility or risk on an absolute basis. The returns on a stock with a beta close to one will move with the market. The returns on a stock with beta less than one have less factor risk than the market and vice versa for a stock with a beta greater than one. The beta and correlation are related. Correlation indicates the strength of the linear relationship between a stock and the market. On the other hand, the beta tells you the change in the response for a one unit increase in the market or factor. Correlation does not have this kind of interpretation. Beta essentially standardizes price movements and puts them on the same scale, which allows you to compare the magnitude of market movements directly. The CAPM market risk premium is the return demanded for taking equity market-wide risk. This is also known as the equity risk premium. Actual returns earned on stocks over a long period of time are calculated and compared to the actual returns earned on a default free. Note that even with only three slices of history considered, the premiums can range widely depending upon the choices made. That is the time period, the average method, the market index, and the risk-free security chosen. It is not surprising, therefore, that the equity risk premiums used by analysts reflect this uncertainty with wide differences across analysts on the number used. The choice of time periods has trade-offs. 
longer periods give more data points. Thus, a common choice is to use the longest reliable return series available. However, many will question whether data from the 1920s is really relevant in today's market. Estimating market risk premium is based only on expectations of future economic and financial variables. Historic MRPs are ignored. These are also called ex-ante estimates. The dividend discount model approach is the simplest and most common forward-looking approach. Here, the market or equity risk premium is equal to the dividend yield on the index based on the year-ahead aggregate forecasted dividends and aggregate market value, plus the consensus long-term earnings growth rate, less the current long-term government bond yield. There are two methods of calculating the market risk premium. One uses macroeconomic models, and the other is the survey method. Economic variables included in these models vary, but on the macro side, they could include the estimate of earnings growth, inflation, valuation, multiple growth, or dividend growth. The survey approach consists of asking agents about the current level of the equity risk premium or market risk premium. Surveys incorporate the views of many people, some of which are very sophisticated and or make real investment decisions based on the level of the equity risk premium. The security market line is used by investors in evaluating a security for inclusion in an investment portfolio in terms of whether the security offers a favorable expected return against its level of risk. We plot the expected or required return against the systematic risk beta. It is important to understand that the CAPM and the security market line or SML are functions that give an indication of what the return in the market should be given a certain level of risk the actual return may be quite different from the expected return. When the security is plotted on the SML chart, if it appears above the SML, it is considered undervalued because the position on the chart indicates that the security offers a greater return against its inherent risk. So in theory, it should be purchased. Conversely, if the security plots below the SML, it is considered overvalued in price because the expected return does not overcome the inherent risk. Securities with betas less than one are often called defensive securities, and those with betas greater than one are often called aggressive securities.